Hi lovers, welcome back, I'm Coach Kara. So today we're here with another dating type video. And today we are going to be talking about how to become a skilled dater by using just a few of Kara's techniques. Dating techniques, that is, okay? So if you have been struggling with um, dating and being successful at it, well, there is a very good reason for that. So you may have found yourself being ghosted or being disappointed, choosing the wrong type of people and wasting your time. So hopefully today I'll be able to provide you with just a few skills that you can take with you to avoid all of that from the very beginning, okay? And when I say the beginning, I mean the first and second interaction. All right. Anything past that, that means you're putting forth effort and there's too much interest there. Um, ultimately, you'll find yourself in that same repetitive, vicious cycle of being disappointed. So now look, look, loves. So when we talk about dating, it is indeed a game. Just like life is a game, everything in life is competitive. It's about competing and being, you know, the one who comes out on top. But when it comes to love, it's about being either the heartbreaker so, or the heartbreaker. Which broken. title do you want to fall under? If you're trying to not even be a heartbreaker, but you want to be able to identify one of those types of people, you're going to learn, you have to learn to get to know them on a different level. See, in order to become a, a, a skilled dater, you need leverage. And the only way to ascertain that level of leverage is by learning that person in a particular manner. And I'm not talking about trying to figure out what the accolades are, their successes. No, we're not doing that. And congratulations to them. But what we need you to do, the one thing that I would recommend to be able to get even the juiciest and the most darkest and the most, you know, disappointing <laughs> characteristic from this individual is you need to be able to allow them to open up to you. Open up to you in a way to where they feel comfortable. You know, on your first date, you're just talking about everything and you ask them a question. So you want to ask questions that segue into other topics that are related so you can get a better feel of the person. You want to find out where their mind is. You know, what it is they do when no one else is looking or after midnight hours. You know, this is what this is what we're trying to find out. And why is that, you ask? Well, by finding out what one's, ne ne one's negative characteristics are and their behaviors, because they're often practiced from person to person, you want to determine what those behaviors are because that is how you're going to ultimately be betrayed. Now, some people have one particular thing that they do, they may just be a manipulative person you know, find the ways to finesse the situation to, to work in their favor, or they just may be a cheater. You know, we want to find out information from them by allowing them to open up and just basically telling themselves. Yeah, it works. I have done it many a times. Pretty much with most people I meet. If, if I figure that you want, to meet, want me to be a part of your life, I have to determine <laughs> if you're going to be loyal and, and, and be the type of person I need in mind. And because of that, I'll allow you to talk and I'll just ask little probing questions. You know, um, so what do you do for fun? So you seem like you're one of those type of guys that, I don't know, maybe go, go to the strip club every now and then. Yeah, yeah. You, oh yeah, yeah, I go to the strip club. Oh, so you just go to one of those, you know, little, little simpy, you know, strip clubs where there's only like five people and you have to throw a little change to make it seem like you're doing something. And see, when you do that, it's manipulative, but whatever, I'm trying to get what I, what I need from them. 
more so than likely this person, especially if they're egotistical and they're trying to impress you, they'll say, oh, no, no, no. I've gone to some of the biggest strip clubs. Like where? Atlanta, Houston, Miami. Where? Where do you spend all your money at? You know, that's the type of person I am. Oh, I go this and da-da-da. And me and my boys, and we drop this amount of money. And, you know, see, here, here's the reason for that. Because more so than likely, he's going to keep talking and talking. What I'm trying to determine is how big the lust is. How big is your lust? Is it just a little common lust, someone walking past you like, okay, all right, love, all right, shorty. You know, you look good, you know? Is it that? Or is it going to a strip club and sitting there for hours and lusting after someone? Because see, what, that, what happens is, you begin to fantasize and lust begets actions at some point you're going to want to act out those fantasies in some way or another you see where i'm going so i want to see how invested you are in going to the strip club is it really going to look at whomever or you and your fellas you just, just go there and enjoy the hot wings. You have conversation. You see booty popping all over the place. You're not paying attention to it. You're just there in the atmosphere and it is what it is. Or is it that kind of situation? You see what it, See, that's what we're trying to determine. The longer you sit and you let that person talk and you're just sitting there just as cool and chill and not being judgmental and laughing it off and... You're just, just letting them move on and to conversation after conversation and see what happens is 20 months, 20 minutes in, and this happens to me all the time, guys. All the time. This is why I know, you know the process. After 20 minutes of them bragging and just talking about themselves and not one moment in between each different topic, do they say, so what about you? What are you interested in? What do you do for? you know, after hours or for fun, you know, what's, what's your fantasy? What's your pleasure? If they don't do that, look, hey, it's a wrap. Right then is when I already know <laughs> that you're not, you're not going to be anything more than just a friend. You've, you've been friend zoned right there. So you can continue to talk and put on a charade and try to impress me all you want to while I'm Waiter, can I have another one? <laughs> I'll just sit in there and just listen to you ramble on, knowing that you're not you're not getting anywhere. See, this is what we're looking for. Someone who has great lust is probably more likely to cheat, especially if they're egotistical. They think they can just do whatever they want. You know, I can do it because you know, hey, I, that type of mentality. There's all different ways you can suss out information from a person, but the best way. It's just to sit there and just be, oh yeah, really? Oh yeah, oh wow. You So you do, you get down like that. Oh, you're crazy. You know, just make it seem like it's nothing and just let them just talk, 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 talk. I get so many people like that. Listen, that's enough. Women, anybody, coworkers, everyone opens up to me because I come off in a way of seeming like I care and I'm really interested because most people want to be seen, first of all. This is why the likes, everyone need likes to feel important and to feel relevant. They need a million subscribers to feel like, oh, I'm doing something. And so whenever I'm just with that one person, I just give them all of my attention. They just open up and just spill everything. Tell me everything about them. Whereas I'm sharing the bare minimum. You see, this is what you want. And the reason why that is, is because now you have a choice to make. It's about choices, people. It is up to you to choose the type of character you want in your life or the type of character to entertain you. I don't want to be entertained by anybody of a certain type. I, I don't. I really don't. And I think that's what most people are doing. You, you, you're so, I won't say desperate, but you're so in dire need to be wanted and to be liked is that you're just settling for any character. I'll give you an example of that. So the other morning I was, I had to stop to the store um, just to grab a few things or whatever. And so as I'm walking down the beverage aisle, the Pepsi, I guess, I guess he worked for Pepsi or whatever. He came to, to stock, right? And so as he's walking down the aisle and I'm looking for whatever I'm looking for, I, all I hear is, ooh, 
And when at first I thought he hurt himself and I looked up and I'm like, you know, it's like, ooh, like he just tch, salivating over me. You know, mine just like eight or something in the morning. I'm moody in the morning and I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And so by the time I find what I'm looking for, he's behind me and he's like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I grab myself to water and I politely sashay these bow legs and his butt down the aisle out of his life. Okay, but pause. Here's the thing though, when we're talking about having dating skills, I could have used that moment and that energy that he was giving me to my advantage. Now, if I wanted to be devious, you know, like I've been in, in my past, look, I'm the heartbreaker. I'll break your heart subtly. I could have easily turned around and entertained him. Now, mind you, I'm smirking the entire time because he's like eye level with me. <laughs> and I just thought it was just so weird. I don't know, it just, I'm 5'3 ish. So I could have easily turned around and stared him in the face and let him smell all of his Burberry and, and ask him, you know, hey, you like it? What are you willing to do to get it? You know, I could have easily charmed my way right into his world, did a little manipulation, got what I wanted from him and sent him scurrying along with his tail between his legs whimpering. I could have easily done that because he wanted it so bad. You see? And trust me, that sort of skill happens every single day, all day long. All because someone is gawking and drooling at a person and they're like, oh, you like what you see? You want to get it? And then you entertain that shit. I, don't, I didn't have to say anything. I just sashayed out of there. I didn't have to do that. Why? Because my interest is not there. I don't want that type of person who doesn't say, hello, good morning, beautiful. You look good today. If you're not saying that to me, then why am I going to even invest any kind of energy into you? He was an idiot. He reminded me of um, Chaotic, the, the rapper. If you don't know who he is, go and Google him. He's, he's, he's an idiot. But I just thought it was just so funny how he was doing it. Like, it was no good morning. I gave him nothing. Absolutely nada. I didn't entertain that. I don't want that type of person entertaining me. But even still, I could have played the game with him because that's what it was. He wanted to see if I was going to bite, if I was desperate, if I was weak, if I was naive and I was gullible. And those are the type of, of people that prey on those types of people. If they can't discern your energy and what type of mentality you are, they're just going to try it. And why are they trying it? Because they tried it before again and again. And it has worked. That's called skill. It's worked. It's worked on the weak minded. The one who has poor self-esteem and daddy issues and mommy issues and just freaking issues. It works, people. So, and that's just it. That's all it is. If you really want to know someone before anything goes any, any further, get them to open up in a way because you want to know how they're going to betray you. When people tell me stories of things that they've done in that moment, that while they're sitting there entertaining themselves and thinking they're impressing me, I'm thinking, oh, so that's how you're going to get me too? Uh, okay. I just want to see how it's going to play. I want to see how you're going to betray me. I'm that type of person. I'll let you stay right in my life. And right when you get to that point, I cut you off. It's just like, wait, well, we'll come back here and come back. No, no. I already knew you were that way. I just wanted to see how you were going to betray me. Kind of like uh, Judas and Jesus. Jesus, he already knew he would be betrayed like that. You know what I'm saying? So you want to identify what one's negative characteristics are first and just save yourself a great deal of time. Don't let that person entertain you because once you start to invest, well, I think I'm going to give them a try. I'll let them, I'll text them, you know, see, see if you can change them. Good luck. If it hasn't worked before, it's not going to work. Certain type of people, especially if they are more like psychopathic, sociopathics, egotistical, overly proud, overly zealous, like just too much of everything, attention whores, they're not gonna give a damn about what kind of investment you're trying to make with them or how, how much loyalty you're trying to show to them. They're going to play you because you're allowing them to, you allow them to come into your life. You allow them to step in the door. You know, it's like in the horror movies, they say if you hear, hear someone knock on the door three times, do not open it, you're letting in the devil. Like that. 
You're entertaining it. Okay? So that's it. That's all the skill you need for dating. Dating is a freaking game. You're either going to win or lose. Marriage is a game. If you don't believe me, more marriages now today are more so than likely transactional. Will you give me this and I'll give you that? It's more transactional. If you don't believe me, ask some of your married friends. All right? So it's, it's a lot of that. You have to have a certain discernment. If you lack discernment, that's okay. Just wait for this person to show you who you are. You focus on that negative. I don't give a damn how many degrees they have, how many cars. All of that doesn't matter when your heart is broken. Okay, my love? You have to, to find a certain skill to be able to detect certain types of characteristics that are being that have been played on. I mean, I mean people are finessing people like crazy because people are so gullible and naive or just simply stupid like you've been through this thing time and time again but you're allowing yourself to continuously go through it that's just stupid you need to talk to someone <laughs> find yourself do some internalizing and find out why you're allowing yourself to go through this repeatedly okay so again it just that one skill just listening to someone talk about themselves and if they're not willing to open up to you red flag let them go. If someone can't open up to you on a deeper level and share with you certain things about them and just a, a general discussion, don't entertain that. Because they may have you waiting forever for them to open up. And when they open up, it's like, woohoo, <laughs> here's Satan. You see what I'm saying? Don't. You want someone to open up to you immediately for your well-being, even if you are Satan. Even if you are the devil, one of his minions, yeah, don't let them play you, okay? So, yeah, that's all for now, guys. I just wanted to share that with you. And, um, yeah, if you need any further dating coaching, all of my information will be down below. I'll start new um, coding, co coaching sessions in the beginning of next year, 2024. So, if you um, just need maybe a 30 minute coaching session, I give all of those as well. 30 minutes, hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever works for you once a week, once a month, I will make that availability happen for you, okay? Because what we can't continuously do is try to get someone and, and try to keep them to stay when they're the wrong one. You understand? All right, my loves. Well. That is all for now. I thank you for joining me always. Until next time.